Hi ladies. I'll wait a minute or so for you guys to have a chance to pop on and whether you are joining me to do your makeup with me step by step or if you are going to watch and then do it later. Um, if you are watching this on replay, oh, you are not, <laughs> Shona's messaged me. You just pop on. I am not doing Zoom. I'm doing a live thing. So hopefully uh, you guys can pop on. Um, I did Zoom the first time last week, um, April 1st. So that was fun. Um, but a lot of people didn't have the app or it was like the audio wasn't working or whatever. So I just thought I'd come on and uh, make it a little bit easier for you guys. <laughs> so hopefully, like I was saying, if you're going to just watch me do my makeup, that's cool. If you're gonna do it with me, I would love for you to post a selfie afterwards um, with your makeup tips. Um, a lot of the girls, so I was asked, like I said, on Monday um, to do a Facebook Live like this in our consultants VIP group. Sorry, con yeah, consultants. So only Alouette consultants. And I had a ton of uh, beauty consultants. Hi, Carmen. Um, so they all posted like afterwards their comments and things that they t uh, picked up and tips. So I was really surprised because these are consultants. So um, that was kind of nice. So I know that what I'm going to share with you tonight is definitely valuable and things that you're going to uh, enjoy and pick up and be able to use. And um, I would love for you, whether you're, you're watching this live or if you're going to do it on a replay, post your comment, what you picked up, what you loved. And then if you're doing a selfie, um, I've noticed because this is like, this is gonna be like the third time this, well, in the last like month, um, doing makeup. <laughs> Usually I wear it every day. So it makes a big difference because when you look good, you feel good. And then when you feel good, you do good, right? So even if it's just something small, like putting on mascara, hey Shona, um, then um, it just makes a big difference, right? So even if you don't do it tonight, that's cool. I would encourage you to do it this weekend. It's Easter, it's spring, even though tonight it's like, I don't even know, I'm looking outside, I don't even know, it's like slushing, slushing, rain, snow, whatever it's going on. But hopefully this uh, weekend is a little bit better. But even if you just do your makeup for yourself and for your family this weekend and, and have an excuse to, to do your makeup, right? It's all, that's what it's all about. So um, yeah, comment if you're watching live or replay and um, I'm gonna start now. So let's, uh, let's get to it. So first of all, a few different things I'm gonna go over. Um, hopefully you have all your, your makeup and your brushes with you. Like I said, don't worry if, if you don't have everything, if it's not all Alouette makeup. Most of you will have the Alouette makeup, obviously, if you're in my customer group. You've either gotten it through a party or having your own party, but that's okay. Use what you have, and if you don't have it, just go to the next step or work with what you got. So it's all good. So we are actually going to start with our eyes tonight because when you're first new to applying makeup, the eyes... Um, sometimes what happens is you get fallout. So from your, uh, from your eyeshadow, some of it can fall. It's called fallout. So it goes here. And then if you've already done your makeup, if you've already done your foundation and your concealer, and then you've, you know, you do your eyes last, you're, en you're ending up like being frustrated. You have to fix it. You have to smudge it, all of that. So it's just, it's just easier if you just start with your eyes at the beginning. And the one thing I want to mention too, is that makeup, there is no rules with makeup. Okay. It's an art. So pick up what, you know, what I'm saying, but if you don't do it, that's fine. I pick up things from other artists and I do things my way and they do things their way. That's what's fine about makeup. It's, it's an art. So there is no right or wrong. It's just what works for you, what, 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 um, you feel comfortable doing, um, what application, you know, some makeup artists literally use their hands for everything, their fingers. Um, obviously brushes make things easier, but there's just different brush brushes for things, but they, they can all work together. So that's what I'm gonna show you tonight, different brushes and things that you can use for different um, application. But we're gonna start with our eyes, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys time um, in between each step to hopefully the ones that are following along to do it. And if not, you can take notes. You'll have time in between if you wanna take notes. Hopefully, ooh, I'm losing my stuff here. Hopefully you have your favorite beverage. I have my wine, so we will have occasional wine breaks. <laughs> okay, so for your first step, we're gonna do our eyes, like I said. So I just wanna show you a little bit about um, when I do personal makeup lessons one-on-one, -on -one, I like to teach the, the customer that I'm working with, the client, the difference, like I'm, I like to explain why. <laughs> um, I'm very hands-on, very visual, so for me to understand it, I that's how I learn, so I try to teach that way. So with your brushes, the more dense it is, the more product it's gonna hold. So for example, this, this brush um, is your eyeshadow brush, so it's round, so if you have this one, get that one out, you're gonna start with this first. So 
So this brush is more, a little bit more dense, so you're gonna get more product on it, right? Um, for example, something like this brush, it's a little bit more fluffy, right? So it's gonna have less product on it. So this is more of like, if you're using it to blend, to put on like a looser powder, something that you don't want a lot of pigment. You wouldn't use this to put blush on. You could, but it wouldn't show a lot, right? You would also not wanna use this for your brush, blush, brush, for example, because uh, as you can see, this is our chisel brush, but it's, it's, it's really dense, right? Like it holds whatever powder you're putting on there, it holds it. So if you're putting your blush on, you're gonna literally get like a streak, right? So that's not the best brush for blush. So I just want to show you guys the difference between like why you use certain brushes and why there's a million brushes. Um, so that's kind of the one-on-one on brushes. Hi girls, thanks for joining. Okay, so the first step is we're gonna, so basically your eyes, you have three main things that you use on your eyes. You use your, your three colors. You have a highlight color, which typically goes right here. I'm gonna apply it in a second, right underneath your eyebrow. You're gonna have an all over base color. So I'm gonna show you a very, very simple day-to-day -day look, a very natural look, and then I'm gonna show you after really quickly how you can take that into a nighttime look. But you're gonna do a very light color right after, so I'm gonna show you like a really light color. So I'm gonna use, if you have this palette, I love it. It's the Alouette Little Black Book of Glam. It has the 12 eyeshadows. Bust that out if you can. You can follow along with these colors. Um, this is a great palette because it's a good mix of matte and shimmer. So I do love this one. So that's a base color. So that would be that, that will be applying all over the lid. And then we're gonna do a contour color, which typically goes in the crease. So I'm gonna go with a really lighter um, brown color so I can show you a daytime look. And then I'll show you a more dramatic uh, nighttime look and something that will show up a lot better on camera so you can see the contouring and how to actually apply that because that's what I find most of my clients when you're first starting makeup they struggle with that right they don't want it to look too smoky or they're not sure the placement of the contouring or how to blend it and all that so I'm going to show you how to do that and also again there's no rules but my rule of thumb is I try not to use all eyeshadows that are all the same so sorry I try to balance it. So I wouldn't use all shimmer. So for example, I wouldn't do a highlight shimmer, an all over contour shil uh, all over shimmer, and then a contour shimmer. Unless it's like a glamorous event, maybe it's New Year's, uh, holidays, whatever, that's obviously fine. But day to day, natural makeup look, usually you stay away from all shimmer, right? So you wanna have a balance. So if I'm doing a shimmery highlight, I would do an all over base um, matte color, which means no shine, right? And then a, a matte um, contour. So that's what I'm gonna show you. So let's start. Okay, so eyeshadow brush. So it's flat, kind of rounded. Um, we're gonna go with, if you're using this, uh, Road Trip, it's called Road Trip. Any like lighter colors would work as long as they're bright. And the thing with eyeshadows and any color in general, anything that's bright, it's pushing it outward so you can see it more. And anything dark is gonna be bringing it in, right? It's gonna be um, taking away, right? So. I'll show you that more when we do the contouring on the face. So this is the eyeshadow. So you're gonna apply this right under your eyebrow on both eyebrows, okay? Then your next step, and just comment too if I'm like, oh, hi, Ursula from BC. <laughs> I don't know what time it is there, but thanks for joining me. Um, if, I'm if I'm talking too fast, because that can happen, just write like slow down or repeat the last step or if you have any questions like when I did my zoom live um, before some of the girls had questions about you know um, eyeliner placement or how do I prevent this or what whatever so this is a little bit different because I obviously you're just I'm just talking to myself right now <laughs> to you guys but you can't re uh, reply back so just that's how you comment <laughs> so I will uh, I can see everything so we can kind of do it like that okay next step oh also a uh, little tip when you're um it's always easier to apply it's always easier to apply more makeup than to put too much on and then try to take it away right because then you end up with like too much hey nikki so this one you can see for your eyeshadow you want to kind of dab off a little bit so you're not getting too much and that's what we call fallout because if you're just like getting too much on there and then you're applying it it's gonna fall right all under your ear and you're gonna end up with all this like powder under your eyes so that's another little thing so you want to uh oh i totally forgot to before i i'm not gonna put it on today but if i was going somewhere maybe i was going to a wedding or out for dinner or uh somewhere that maybe in the summertime when it's really hot your skin um your so this is an uh i you would usually start with an eye primer 
So you you put this on your eyelids before you put your eyeshadow on, so it helps prevent that crease and the oil buildup. So that's really important. If sometimes you go in, to work in the morning, you put your eyeshadow on, and all of a sudden by the end of the day you come home and it's like off your face. You're like, I swore I wore eyeshadow. Where did it go? Um, that's what that's for. That's what a primer is for. There's tons of different primers out there. Um, this one's really nice. Obviously, it's Alouette, but it's um it's called Heavenly Sheen. So I just put a little bit on my hand here. You can see, it's like it's not going anywhere it goes on creamy it dries like a powder and it's got a really nice shimmer um so that one's really good for that and then you would apply that first but because i'm transi transitioning from a daytime to nighttime it's harder to blend when you have a good primer on so that's why i chose not to wear it but i wanted to show you it what are you using as a base to de to decrease increasing so um uh tisha we're gonna use the road trip as the highlight and then i'm actually using sorry the sunrise as the next step. The sunrise is a really pretty color for um, the base because it's kind of like, a, it's not super dark, but it's got like a nice pigment. And that's what's really great about these products too, because what pigment means is, and, and this happens too when I do a lot of um, makeovers one-on-one, -on -one or private makeup lessons, I obviously encourage them to bring all their makeup that they have, and a lot of it is drugstore brand. And I'm trying to show them to put it on and they're putting it on and it's like barely showing up. And so it's harder to show them the techniques if hardly any of it's coming on. You have to literally, it's, it's, so our stuff is highly pigmented because the color actually shows up. So whatever color you're applying, you don't need to put it on 15 times for the color to show, right? So that's how you know it's a good quality product. If it's a high pigment product, our products do not have talc in it. A lot of the stuff in the store has talc. So it's a filler. It's cheap and it's just um, it's just it makes your it, you, you go through your makeup a lot more right so we're, we're using um, the sunrise so the thing is if you're wondering okay like how do I know what color to put on my eyes everyone has obviously different eyes uh, colors so I base my kind of what I would apply if I was doing someone's makeup based on their eye color so you want to use a contrasting color contrasting colors make things pop so brown eyes can pretty everything's pretty much a contrast in color compared to brown eyes so purples golds uh, browns are obviously very neutral um the color that i'm going to show you soon with the nighttime look is called sangria it is a bright like bright moby kind of color yeah shona honey would look good with a highlight for sure uh sorry and um yeah yeah those would work green eyes would be um purples look really nice on green eyes, uh, golds, uh, browns. So basically, like if you have blue eyes, for example, you're not going to put blue eyeshadow on because what's going to happen is it's going to compete with your blue eye color, your natural color, and it's going to it's gonna compete and it's not going to be contrasting. It's going to compete and it's going to dull the natural blue in your eyes. So you don't want that. You want your, your blue eyes to pop, right? Everyone's like, oh my gosh, your eyes look like your eye color looks amazing. It's because it's usually uh, something that's a contrasting color up against it. So that's basically the rule of thumb with picking out eyeshadow colors is that you want to have a contrasting color. So if you have green eyes, you don't want to put green eyeshadow on, right? It'll dull your natural green. You want that to pop, right? So that's why pretty much everything with brown is a contrasting color. But um, so that's where you kind of start with anyways. And if you're not sure, message me and I can, I can show you. Okay, so hopefully you are following along and we've got, so you're your um, base color you start of course at the base here and you're literally going up all the way to where the highlight is so that's your that's your base okay so I did the sunrise which is a really pretty color it also looks really nice with peach and going into spring and summer it's really nice okay so your next step is your contouring so with if you have a brush like this this is a round brush so it's kind of angled and it's just easier to to blend if you don't, that's totally fine. You can go back to using your eyeshadow brush and you're going to use it the same way. You just maybe need to blend it out a little bit more. And that's the thing with makeup. Um, it's fine. Sometimes when you initially put it on, um, it looks like you have like lines, but then you go back in and you blend it, right? So as long as you're not leaving it unblended <laughs> when you initially, and you'll see when I do it, um, that it just, you just want to blend it, right? Blending solves everything. Okay, so your next step, I'm going to do the next one. You can tell those are my favorite three because they're obviously getting to the end. <laughs> this one's called BFF. So if you have any kind of like lighter brown um, color or like a goldy color, or if you want to go with a uh, bronze, that would look pretty too. So we're gonna tap off a little bit and then, okay, so I'm gonna show you where you would apply your contour. So your contour is basically to 
shape your eyes. So you don't want them to be too beady. You don't want them to draw them in too much. You want the whole purpose of contouring is to open up your eyes, right? To make them look bigger than what they are. So you are gonna take this and you are gonna, so if you can't feel where your natural bone is, you should be able to feel where it is. If you can't, you're just gonna look at the camera or look in the mirror um, and you're gonna place it basically right like over where you think it should go, right? Right over, like you should be able to see a little bit of it when you look at yourself. So some people with hooded eyelids um, will need to do that because the, the sagging of the eye, the eyelid uh, prevents you from like going over that, right? Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so you're gonna start right here. So, oh, another thing is too, you shouldn't be, con you shouldn't contour past this. So it should line up with your tip of your eyebrow to the edge of your eye. So if you are all the way out here <laughs> doing your contouring, that's okay, you're learning and uh, we can fix it after. We're gonna take a brush, I'll show you after and you're just gonna clean it up. But hopefully you're in the same area. So, okay, let's just, okay. So we are gonna start here, okay? And you're gonna go about three quarters or half. Notice I'm not going all the way in because that would be making the eyes smaller, right? Or, or smoky, really smoky. We want a daytime natural look. So we're just going kind of in and three quarters, right? And then you're also gonna, so it's like windshield wipers. You're going back and forth like a windshield wiper until you get the darkness. This is a daytime really light look, so I'm not, I'm gonna show you after the darker ones, you'll probably see it better. But then we're gonna take a little bit more and we're gonna bring it down towards the lash line. So it's creating a V shape, like a sideways V, right? So down and then towards the middle, okay? So you can see that. Again, I'm going to show you the darker color so that will show up a little bit better on, on camera. So we're going to go ahead and do the other eye. And that's what's nice about this brush is that it blends really nicely because it's going back and forth. If you don't have that brush, like I said, you would just take this one, your eyeshadow brush, and you would you would create it that way. It, would, it should work the same. It's just a little bit less work. And then you're going to blend it out. Mark's watching from downstairs. Hi, babe. I w we are going to go on soon <laughs> together on my personal Facebook one day, and he's going to do my makeup. I'm going to um, get him to do step by step. He wants a practice run first, but I said no. Um, and I think it would be hilarious for a guy that has nothing, he has no idea about any makeup to just do my makeup and see actually how, I don't think he'd do a bad job, but we'll, we'll see. That'll be another when we get really bad, bored, bored in the house, house bored. Yeah, we'll have that playing in the background. Okay, so sideways V. Okay, hopefully you guys are good with that. Hope you're doing well with your contouring. <laughs> like I said, in a second, we're going to show you the darker color. So you'll be able to probably see that a lot more. So if you messed up, you're going to take um, a brush like this and you're going to take it and just kind of clean up the edges, right? It should go in this area. That's where your, your contouring shouldn't go past that. Okay, so you're going to go like that. <laughs> and again, if you have any fallout, just go ahead and remove it so it doesn't stay there. Okay, next step is your eyeliner. Okay. So whatever eyeliner you have, I'm gonna show you both. Some people love mechanical waterproof and some people love um, the um, powdered eyeliner, which in that case you would use this guy. It's a thin angled um, brush. So I'm gonna use both so you guys can see and I'm gonna show you a, tr a trick after two how to uh, incorporate a daytime and nighttime look with that as well. So I love our waterproof mechanical eyeliner because it's just, it's easy to apply, it glides, it's waterproof. Um, if you're going for a really natural look, you want to use maybe like a, a brown, especially if you have blue eyes or green eyes. Brown would be a contrasting color, so it would make your eyes pop more. I like makeup and I like looking a little, um, it still looks natural on me because I have dark features, but black, you can't go wrong with black. So notice how I'm not, again, going all the way, all the way in. I'm going about half to three quarters because I don't want it to look beady. I want it to look big. I want my eyes to look bigger um, to create that shape, right? Hi, Lori, my bestie just popped on. She's a makeup artist too. Okay. Oh, Leila, are you from Newfoundland? I think so. I don't know what time it is there either, but that's awesome. Thanks for joining. 
Okay, so if you are somebody that loves, okay, so I'm, I again do it based on my features. So I personally just like to do the eyeliner on the bottom, especially for daytime. I think it looks more natural. Um, I like to have the eyeshadow show more. So when you cover it up with more eyeliner, it's gonna take away from some of your eyeshadow. That being said, if, I mean, again, there's no rules. So if you like the look of your eyeliner on the top, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna show you what I do. If I was going out somewhere, getting my picture taken and I wanted my eyes to look a little bit darker, darker or a little bit smokier, <laughs> Carmen, what are you doing wrong? <laughs> um, then you would take this eyeliner brush and you could use, um, if you have Winter Nights palette too, again, if you were at one of my shows recently, you probably do because this was on sale for $16, which is crazy, has the four eyeshadow, or four, uh, the blush, the bronzer, highlight, and then the six eyeshadows. I'm going to use the dark um, charcoal. It's called Hot Cocoa. I'm going to use that and just show you what you could do if you wanted a very natural daytime look. You're just gonna take a little bit and apply it again about three quarters and you're gonna go in like little um, tap wiggle, tap wiggle. And it just looks really, really natural but I just like to create that little smokiness but nothing crazy. And again, I'm doing, I'm gonna do a nighttime look shortly so I don't wanna mess up the colors too much but you can see there, let me just see my mirror, yeah. So you can do that if you want for your, if you don't have the mechanical um, and you want powder, just go ahead and do the powder on the bottom. When you're applying with this brush, you wanna go the outside, right? The corner on the outside is what you would lead with. So it'd be hard if you were doing it this way and then bringing it this way, you want it to kind of go like that, okay? So then, again, no general rule, but some people do mascara next. I like to fill my eyebrows and then do mascara, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna show you with your eyebrows. Um, this brush, so it's a thicker brush. If you don't have a brow brush, a thin angled brush, like the one that you maybe just used, that would work as well. You just might have to take a little bit more like strokes. Um, so with eyebrows, I personally love to use a powder. I, fi I find it more forgiving, it's easy to work with, it looks more natural. Um, but if you have um, a mechanical one, go ahead and use that, it's totally fine, of course. So I love this one, this is our Rich Coco, um, or sorry, Coco Couture. But this one is for my color, right? Because I have the darker brown, but um, we have a uh, little black, or sorry, the um, Oh Wow Brow, which also has like for redheads, for blondes. So whatever color you are, if you have that, if not, if you only have this um, palette, you can use whatever, you know, color matches your eyebrows, as long as it's not a shimmer. You don't wanna use a shimmer on your eyebrow, right? Okay, the thing with eyebrows, okay, sorry, we need a wine break. Okay, the thing with eyebrows is that they are sisters, not twins. <laughs> so they're never gonna look the same. Sorry to break it to you, but I'm pretty sure you already know this. <laughs> So just uh, a little tip when you're applying your brows, okay? You want to start in the middle, right? Where the arch is because most people, what they do is they'll take it, they'll take all the powder, right? The pigment, and then they'll start right here and then they'll get way too much and then it's like, oh shoot, how do I? And then it's like a hot mess at the beginning of your eyebrow and it's harder to, to blend, right? So if you just start in, in the crease or in the... Um, arch it's just a lot easier to work with and then you literally just go from there to the front of your eyebrow and then you bring it back towards the tip and I mean it depends on what look you want if you really want a darker look you would you would go over it again but um, usually one time you're good to go right so that can start in the middle of the arch and then go to the front Fill it in, little strokes. So hopefully that's easy for you to fill in your eyebrows. You want to fill in your eyebrows because it frames your face, especially if you're getting your picture taken. If you're going somewhere and you're getting your picture taken, it just, you can just see your features way better. It honestly, it's like a facelift. Some of my parties I go to, sometimes I'll do, I'll demo like a, we'll do somebody's eyebrow, we'll do one eyebrow and not the other, and you can literally look, like it looks like, you can see a huge difference. So just, if you're scared to fill in your eyebrows, that's like one thing you can take away from this, fill in your eyebrows this weekend and just see 
it just like opens up your eyes and it just fills in everything, okay? Okay, so next up is mascara. Oh, sorry, before you put on your mascara, you might wanna curl your eyes, your eye, your eye um, lashes. So I'm gonna show you what I use professionally and what I use on myself. So sometimes I intertwine them. So of course, most people know what this is. It's the eyelash curler. It's kind of scary though, right? So um, I definitely don't use this on other people. I've never felt comfortable going up to someone and be like, hold on, I'm gonna clamp you. It's like, I can barely do it on myself, right? So um, if you, and plus this can damage your eyelashes if you are, you always wanna do this before your mascara. And some people do mascara and then they clamp it and then it sticks and it can actually damage your eyelashes. So this little guy is really cool. So this is what I use when I do professional um, makeup. And it's from our, it's our Dell brand and it's from Sally's. It's like $20 and it's a heated eyelash curler. I know. So basically you put two little AAA batteries in the bottom and you turn it on. You can probably see the little, I don't know if you can see, there's a little light right there. That's when you know it's on. And then this part warms up. And you just tell your client or yourself to look down and it literally curls your eyelashes and it just feels warm and it's way less scary and it's way better for your eyes. So I just wanted to show you that because not a lot of people know this exists. Um, there's other brands obviously out there, but I just, I get all my, when I do my bridal makeup, I do um, eyelash extensions, all that fun stuff at Sally's. So um, Cosmoprof probably has one and probably Walmart too, but that's where I got mine. So you just take it and it just warms it up and then it, Curls your eyelashes. I know, isn't that cool? When I did my Facebook Live uh, video um, in the consultant group, somebody posted after. So after hearing Misty talk about uh, eyelash curler, how many of uh, you are going out and buying one asking for a friend? So it was funny. So yeah, definitely like a cool tool. Okay, so get your favorite mascara out. I use these two because um, I just love both of them. So the A-List is really conditioning. It's an eyelash curler, or sorry, an eyelash curling one because it has like a thin angled wand applicator. But our new top shelf mascara just came out and I absolutely love it. So I actually gonna, I'm just gonna show you both. So I'm gonna do one uh, coat of the A-List and then I'm gonna show you our new top shelf. And you're gonna see a huge difference if you haven't seen me demo this product or try it yet. It's freaking amazing. So a little tip when you're applying your mascara, you definitely want to do your bottom lashes first because if you don't, if you do your top first and then you go like this to do your bottom, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get mascara all over your pretty eyeshadow. If that happens, because let's be honest, it does sometimes, you're going to let it, you just don't touch it. You let it completely dry if you goof up and you take a Q-tip at the very end when it's dry, a dry Q-tip and you take it and you just kind of twirl it and it literally will just troll right off. I promise, it happens all the time. So that's a little tip if you if you mess up your um, mascara. Okay, also rule of thumb, I like to do top and bottom mascara. It just, I think it makes everything um, look bigger and brighter, but there's no um, right or wrong. So if you aren't comfortable doing your bottom lashes, you don't need to, you don't have to, but if you've never tried it, I would go ahead and encourage you to give it a try because you never know and you're at home right now so it doesn't really matter if you don't like it you can wash it off but I think it makes a big difference I always do it so hopefully you're following along and you guys are good so far okay so bottom lashes look so weird looks like doll a doll lash when you just do the bottom okay so next one I'm gonna do the a list on the top just one coat, and then I'm gonna show you the difference between that and the top shelf, which is amazing. Okay, so this one again has argon oil, so it's very conditioning. Um, it's very healthy for your lashes, especially if anyone's giving them a break right now from lash extensions by force. Um, this is a great mascara. However, if you, are taking a break and you're like used to having you know the lashes then this one's great I like this one personally like I said if I'm um, no I'm going out like when Mark and I went out for Valentine's Day and for our trip we were on um, last week of February I use this all the time because it just looked really nice in uh, photos so this is the top shelf mascara you can see it's a lot thicker wand then the A-list, so it took me a little bit. I had to take my time doing my lashes because I'm so used to being like, did you do? And then the first time I did this, it was like mascara everywhere, and it might still happen, but we'll see. Um, 
So just one coat of this is really all you need. It's super dramatic. It's very volumizing. Oh, yep. See? See that? We'll just let that dry. <laughs> and I'll show you my little trick. I knew that was... It's also really weird to do your makeup on a camera. But anyways, let's... Uh... Do you see that? I'm not even really hardly putting it on because, it, like I said, it's really awkward in your camera, on, especially on a phone. But okay. Can you guys see the difference? with one coat. Give me some hearts. That's crazy. I love this mascara. So that's the top shelf. Actually, I'm just going to re dip. There we go. Uh, anybody, any of my customers that have gotten this, they absolutely are like, this is my new mascara. I love it. Sandra, this is the one I was telling you about. <laughs> and again, so awkward to Sorry, I'm just gonna, just so I don't poke myself in the eye. Everything else I can pretty much do in the phone, but that one is just, I need my eye. Okay, can you guys see that? It'll show even better when I do your nighttime look, but yeah. Um, Wanda, if it clumps, you could, um, it depends what you have at home. So here I have this, which is like, a spoolie so um say you have an old mascara that dried up and you instead of throwing it out you could actually rinse the end of it with soap and water and use that right for future to go like that if you want and go in between and kind of but I find this one's actually not bad for clumping like I I didn't like can you guys see it doesn't look clumpy to me maybe a little bit right here I don't know generally it doesn't clump it's pretty good so I know, Danielle, I love this mascara. Oh, okay, so let me fix this little guy so then we can show you quickly the uh, nighttime look and then we'll carry on. Um, so, like I said, let it dry. Okay, I think I, I always mess up this one for some reason. So we're gonna take, remember I said just let it dry and then you're gonna take a little Q-tip and you're just kinda like that. She gone, see? If it was wet, it would smudge everywhere and you'd be cursing right now. So you're welcome. Okay, next step I'm gonna show you is the nighttime look. So like I said, I wanted something that was super like bright on camera. Um, I do love wearing this color. Um, it's a really pretty color. It's very contrasting and it's really nice going into spring and summer. It's called Sangria. So it is right here. It's like a bright kind of berry, berry color. It's really pretty. So I'm gonna show you, again, we're gonna go back <laughs> right yeah if you're gonna use anything these days you gotta get mascara just makes you feel a little bit more more better right so we're gonna go back to the contour I have this color on and then I'm gonna show you again where you would apply it right so crease right back and forth like windshield wipers <laughs> I know it's so exactly this is definitely so this one's called sangria and the one next to it is called rose so when Alouette came with those colors I was like yes it's all wine theme my kind of makeup but, and then you're gonna go down so remember we were showing you this technique earlier so I'm gonna show you after how to blend that but is not that pretty I love this color I know everyone's so scared usually to use it but it's because they don't know how to how to put it on and then once you figure that out it's like yeah okay so sideways v it's different to do when you have mascara on already but that's okay okay so you can kind of see the placement right then you can go back in even with your eyeshadow you can either go back in with your eyeshadow brush or your fluffy if you have this one and blend it out so i'll just show you with this because it's kind of easier you don't need much it should just blend. It shouldn't look like you have three, like, th three lines, right? But it just kind of just flows, right? And if you want it darker, you would go back in and add more and blend it. So another tip, like I was saying, also that you can do, especially really good for people with hooded eyes. So say you put all this eyeshadow on and you're like, I can't really see it because maybe your eyes droop a little bit. Fine. Take your thin angled brush. And you're going to go back in with whatever color. So whether it's dark brown, whatever color you used for here, you go back in and you use that underneath your eyes 
as your eyeliner and it just makes it pop more and it brings out the color. And again, just three quarters half. We, you don't wanna go all the way. But see how that just made it pop more? And you can see the color and it just brings it together. Hopefully you guys can see that. I love that we all go when you're applying anything on your eyes. I don't know why your brain does that. It's so funny. Okay. Good. Can you guys see that? So that's just a little tip. If you, especially if it's a darker color and you want it to look smoky without having a smoky eye, you would just bring that color underneath and it just gives it a nice pop, right? So yeah, I like that. Okay, so next step. So again, if you, if you had any fallout, so if you had anything that fell, I'm pretty good, I don't, but if you did, you would just take a fluffy brush and go like that and wipe it away, okay? All right, let's go to the next step, which is your face. So um, you wanna use a primer to, pri so now that the eyes are done, we wanna prime the face. So we have different primers. So depending on your skin type, really, um, you can use whatever primer you have currently. If you have an Alouette one, bust that out. I'm gonna show you basically all three just because I don't get sometimes to talk about these at my parties. So if you have oily skin type, especially going into spring and summer, if you get oilier skin with the weather getting nicer, this one's a really cool product. It's called Made Matte. And it literally, um, it's really, really soft. Um, and it literally takes away the shine. And you can just go like this and you can see. So what a primer does is it takes away um, imperfections in the skin. It helps prime the skin, just kind of like you prime your face or your paint for your walls. It, it makes it so that the makeup has something to adhere to. So it'll just look smoother and it actually will make it last a lot longer, right? So this one's called Made Matte. So this one is a mattifying one. So I actually keep this one in my purse in the summer. And what's cool about this product is you can actually put it on over top of makeup. So after you've done it and throughout the day, if it got really oily, um, you can actually over top of your makeup, put it on and it won't mess up your makeup. So that's kind of cool. So, but typically I would just use my um, Flawless Primer with, I usually mix the Luminous Tint, especially, it's still kind of cold out, right? So it's still winter-ish. So uh, my skin's not super oily right now. It is, um, I, like, I like the glow. I like that Luminous Glow. That's what's in right now too, right? So the Flawless on its own, you can see it's a little bit yellow undertone. So that's gonna be good for if you have redness in your skin and large pores. Fine lines, I call it like putty of polyfill, it like fills in everything. And then the Luminous Tint has shea butter, olive oil, coconut, so it's super hydrating and it gives a nice glow. So I literally put a little dab of each and I mix those together because I want the benefits of both. I want the polyfill and I also want a little bit of the, uh, the glow. So I literally take that and I just shove it on my face and you blend that in and then that is my primer. And I mean, these last me like a year. They really, you a little goes a long way. And these all go on sale anyway throughout the year. And I'll talk about it at the end. We have a big sale on right now too, which I didn't know about until two days ago. So that was exciting. So you just blend that all into your skin. Oh my gosh, if you could feel these products, I mean, they are so soft. It's like a cream to powder. They're just really nice. So that's kind of like a nice, it evens out everything. Okay, so that's your... That's your primer. So then I use a concealer. So if you have your own concealer, it might look like a stick. It's kind of like, some of them are a little bit more liquidy. Um, I personally, again, use and love the um, Alouette Duo Concealer. This one's really good for creaminess, but it doesn't settle or crepe into the skin. So sometimes, by the end of the day, it looks like you have concealer on. It shouldn't, right? You shouldn't come home from work and you have lines and everything settled. Like it, that's just not a good product, right? So this one's really cool because it's a duo. So you can see it's a light and a medium color. So you're good for spring and summer or uh, summer and winter, or if you're in between. And I actually use my, my pinky finger. The warmth from your finger melts it and then it blends it a lot easier. So that's why it's easier to apply. So a concealer helps conceal any dark circles, any redness, um, if you have any dark capillaries around your nose. Um, I don't even know what this was. This literally popped up before I came on. Maybe I was nervous, I don't know. Also, I don't know what I was eating today, something that made me have like, it's like a little hive. <laughs> I don't know what the heck. And I got a nice pimple, so there you go. Eating too many mini eggs. <laughs> so that conceals that. <laughs> 
And then um, yeah, we'll do the other eye. But you can just see it like lies. It's so nice and it lasts forever. So this is a really nice product. So I use, I use this um, in my professional makeup kit as well too. Okay, so you're gonna get your foundation out next. Line break. Okay, I'm gonna use our Alouette foundation, which is our Be Picture Perfect. This came out in July, so I've been using it for a while. Absolutely love it. Um, if you have the Ultra Finish Powder Foundation, definitely use that. It's um, with your chisel brush, right? Flat surface brush, you're gonna buff it into the skin. Um, but if you haven't seen this one, I absolutely love this product. It is an all over 12 hour stay all way, I can't even talk, <laughs> stay all day um, liquid foundation. So it's a demi matte, so it does help with uh, sh shine as well. But it stays amazingly and it's a uh, anti-aging and skincare ingredients in it. So that's extra bonus. I found that now that I'm over 30, I was finding the ultra finish was settling a little bit too much. It wasn't giving me as much coverage that I wanted. Still a great product. It just depends on your skin type. So, <laughs> so this one is, um, this one's light tan and I like to mix it a little bit with the regular other one that's tan, but you don't need very much. I'm going to just show you here. Even if you use both, it should amount to about a skittle. That is how I measure things in Skittles. So you don't need more than that. You would just blend it together. And again, no right or wrong way. Some people like to put it on their, like squirt it on their brush and then go like this. I like to go like this and paint my face and put it in the five areas, right? And then I always use my hand as a palette. And then I would take my liquid chisel brush. Some people have our new Pro Precision brush, which is also a really great um, brush. I'm just a, a creature of habit, so I'm used to, I've been using this one until it falls apart. Um, I'll probably use it. I use this sometimes for um, if I'm going somewhere, again, fancy and I want to look a little different. This one makes me look like super flawless airbrushed. You would just kind of buff it into the skin. But for now, just because it's easier and faster. You're going to take this and you're going to apply it in circular motions. So if you're not sure what foundation you should be using, what shade, um, you would take your, if you're testing it, you would take it here on your side of your cheeks, like into your um, um, jaw, and it should literally not look like you're wearing anything. It should blend right into your skin, so it shouldn't look different, right? It should literally just blend right in. Um, I can do a video chat consultation with you if you need to, but you probably already have your matching foundation, so you're probably good to go, but that is definitely an option. So you're just going to literally blend it all over. I love this one. Sorry, I just need to go in between my eyebrows. There we go. And obviously you want to go all the way up towards your hairline. Okay, like we're good. Right, see, full coverage. Doesn't look, um, I have this white light on, so it looks like weird, but it's very, very natural. Oh, Julia, she's so cute, I miss her. I haven't seen you guys forever. Okay, so, okay, foundation done. Love this one, okay. That one also lasted me, sorry, I'll show you. This came out, it came out in July, I've been using it since July. So it'll last me, I'm pretty sure, till July, especially because I'm obviously not using it every day now because we're in quarantine. But um, it's still quite a bit in here. So you don't need very much. This should last you a long time for sure. Okay, so next step is going to be our cheeks. So if you want to bust back out your if you have your winter nights palette which again has your bronzer your highlight and your blush those are the colors that we're going to be using next so if you don't have this palette that's fine if you have any kind of bronzer um get your bronzer out so for your cheeks we are going to be using this guy so this one is more of a fluffier brush so if you have anything that's this kind of fluffiness you don't need it doesn't need to be um angled um, but if you do have this one or an angled one, I find it works a lot um, better. So you place your bronzer on your cheeks, but just slightly under where you would apply your blush. So again, um, what a contouring does, face highlighter, we're going to use 
we're gonna use that um, after bronzer. So we're gonna do a bronzer first, then we're gonna do a blush, and then we're gonna do the highlight. So if you have illuminating face radiance, you would put that on first all over, then your foundation, Wanda, and then we're gonna use the cheek colors, okay? So contouring is what makes you look skinny, and we're gonna look like fishies, and you go, and you can put it all the way back towards your hairline, right? So it's to create that bronze look and also to illuminate and kind of shape the face a little bit nicer. Um, so typically a blush, which we'll put, put on next, you don't want it to be too close to your nose. You want it to be about one finger or one, if you take your, your brush, about one um, brush length away from your nose and same with your eyes, right? So it should be like in this area, right? You don't want it to be too close because it'll look kind of clownish. So I'm applying a little bit more just than normal because so you guys can see because I have the white light and it's like you're not seeing as much pigment, but just so you can see the placement. And also, because the sun comes from up here, typically your bronzer can go on uh, the tops of your hairline. Um, this looks really nice in photos, but it also looks really ni natural and nice, and it just kind of gives you some more color without it looking like, you don't want to put bronzer everywhere, but those are the areas you would put your bronzer. I don't know if you can see that. It just kind of also makes your face look skinnier when you apply it up there and then on your cheekbones, right? Okay, then your next step is your um, blush. So I personally love the Chinook, which is also really similar to like the Rose Petal blush, um, or the Rose Dust blush, sorry. But any kind of neutral colors, whatever blush you have, go ahead for it, go for it. And we're gonna just take a little bit and we're gonna put that slightly above where I put the bronzer. I personally don't like going like this and then applying it because I find for, I don't know, maybe because I don't have the full cheeks, it just ends up going too far in. Um, so I just kind of like look at where I've put the bronzer and I just kind of go slightly above that. And again, back towards the hairline, right? So it should just, it looks really natural and you definitely want it to go towards the hairline. Um, otherwise you'll end up with like a round <laughs> cheek area that doesn't look, that's not natural. It just looks funny. So hopefully you guys can see, right? And if you put too much on, cause you're like, oh, I'm having fun. Kind of like what I just did. Um, you can go back in with either the um, brush that you used for your foundation, or you could use a fluffy brush. It's okay. Just blend it out. Just blend it out so it looks a little bit more natural. That's it. Okay, so that's your blush. Then we're gonna do highlight. So I, you could use the gingerbread that's in the Winter Nights palette. And if you don't have this palette, it is still a super sale right now for $16.80, which is a steal. So you get six eyeshadows and the two blushes and the highlight and the bronzer. Like, that's crazy. Okay, so I personally like the diamond highlight, which is the Alouette. Um, it's a really, really natural. I just like the goldiness of it. So highlighter. I like to take the tip. So this is what's cool about this brush because it's like on an angle. You can just flip it over and you take a little bit and you put this just slightly above again where you would put the blush again from the hairline all the way about halfway on your cheeks. You do not want to bring it all the way in because again, it's going to look oily. It's going to look greasy, right? You don't want too much highlight. You want it just to be like a glow. So if you're, you know, naturally walking, take a picture, you can just see where it like the, t the sun kind of kisses you. Right? So that's kind of the point of the highlight is to give you that luminous kind of glowy, um, look. So it's up to you. If I like to start from here and go in, but some people start from here and go out, it's totally whatever works for you. If you have this brush too, this one, this one, some of the girls in Alouette use this as the highlight. So it's a little bit smaller, easier to control, but depends on how um, thick you want it, like how much product you want. If you have really dry skin, this is great because it'll give you that hydration, that glow uh, this way too, right? Another tip is if you are again going somewhere, an event and you wanna have that extra glow or again, you're getting your picture taken, just take a little bit more and you can actually apply it on the tips of your nose. And right here, this is called your Cupid's bow. That's how you get the Insta, all the Insta photos. That's what they do. 
that's a little thing that they do. So it just gives you that extra, that extra glow, okay? Don't go crazy with it, but just little, little tiny little dab there, okay? All right, so um, let me just show you. I think we're good. Do you guys, are you good to go? Do you guys have any questions about bronzer or blush or highlight? We're good? Thumbs up? Okay. So um, lips would be your last step, right? And then a setting spray, and then we're done. So um, I'll show you, okay, so my favorite, I have two products that aren't Alouette that I love, and then my Alouette one. So the Alouette one I'll finish off with, but this is called Rose Dust, and it's a really subtle light pink gloss. It's not sticky, but it looks good on everyone. It's um, very natural no matter what time of year, uh, what outfit, it's a go-to. It's in my purse. I use it literally all the time. I have lots of customers that, um, that use it um, all the time. So. So that's my go-to if you like hydration, if you need a gloss. Um, if you're looking for a product that stays on a little bit longer, of course, um, Alouette's uh, natural, right? So we don't have like a lip paint because it's not natural. But if you're looking for that, when I do bridal makeup, I want my brides to, or my bridesmaids, of course, um, to be able to put on a product and, and wear it on their lips and it lasts for hours, right? It's more convenient and it's just easier. So my two favorite brands, and I've tried tons of them, is Stila. Um, this one is a little bit lighter pink, but there's another one called um, Patina Sheer, and it's a really, really pretty color. So that one's a really great product. And then my favorite that I've been wearing um, this past winter um, is called the, it's Lee's Watier. And these I just got at Shoppers. And this one is a really, so metal, metallic lips were really in. Um, so this one was, it's called Tender Kiss. So I'm just going to show you how you would apply a liquid uh, lipstick if you wanted to do that. Because it's different. If you're wearing regular lipstick, it's creamy. You would put it on and normally go like that. You can't do that with, uh, with a liquid because it dries. And then you want it to like, it'll just be a hot mess. It'll like goop. So... You basically take it, hold on, and you're just gonna, uh, see it's like the comments are right over my lips. I might need to, let's see here. So you want it to dry, so you don't touch your lips. <laughs> and then it's easier if you go like this, and you keep it bow. There we go. Okay, so if you want to fill it in, you can a little bit more. But I thought this was a really pretty color, and it's yeah, it's just it lasts like hours. So just a little bit something different that I don't obviously get to talk about at my shows, but that I love and that I have in my professional kit. So if I wanted to add a little gloss to it, I would just again because especially if you're not drinking a lot of water too in the winter or dehydrated, your lips, you don't want to use a liquid lipstick because it'll accentuate how dry your lips are. So you always want to put a little gloss over top of it, but thus we'll break it down so it's not going to be as um, long lasting, but it works. See this one, the Alouette one, you can put on top of anything and it just like makes everything blend and look pretty. So just wanted to show you guys that. And then the last step is your setting spray. So Alouette has a makeup setting spray. I don't get to talk about this one very often. It's called Set and Shield. Um, the purpose of a setting spray, of course, is to help your makeup stay on longer and it sets it, but there's different types out there. There's some that help give you a glow. If you have dry skin, it hydrates. Um, my bridal makeup one um, makes your skin waterproof. So basically if you're crying or dancing, it's setting it, but it's not good to wear day to day. This is a really great product day to day. It's got um, charcoal on it, in it. <laughs> so then you can see the bottom part is floating around. That's all the charcoal and grapeseed extract. So that actually protects against the environment. So all the crap that's in the air, is gonna li literally um, help protect that and it helps mattify the skin, which is really nice. So I love this one. When I'm wearing makeup, I'll use it. But even if I'm just running errands and I go out, I usually go to the gym, like normally, um, when I, we get back to normal, Spritz on my face first, go to the gym, I, it protects your skin and it also helps mattify the skin. So this one's good for oilier skin types. So how you use this one is you just shake it, it mixes the charcoal, activates it, and then any setting spray, you wanna hold about eight to 10 inches away from your face. And then that's it. The smell of this, it's like a no smell smell. 
it's like fresh because it's the charcoal but other than that there's no smell it's really cool so that one's the set and shield it's an environmental protection setting spray but you could wear it every day just even if you don't wear makeup so i wanted to show you that one and that's your final step because that's your it sets and everything so um i was going to mention too alouette has yeah trish you'll love it so alouette has a sale on right now it's an easter sale so i haven't um I kind of promoted it, but not really, um, just because it was like a spot thing, but it's on until Tuesday. So if there's anything that you wanted to get tonight or that you want to have time over the weekend to maybe look at, um, it ends on Tuesday and it's 30% off site-wide. So all of our products, so anything, makeup, skincare, body care, everything is 30% off right now. And you have to use the code BUNNY30. So if you're going onto my website, which is alouette.com slash misty, M-A-S-T-I, you can shop online and then upon checkout, you can put in the bunny 30 discount code or message me and I can obviously order it for you. Um, ships Canada post. It's 555 flat. Um, I think I just spit. Sorry. Uh, 555 <laughs> shipping right to your door. Um, as well as we have our BOGO sale on that I am going to be emailing out this weekend, but I did. You're in my VIP group. So you of course knew about it first and the BOGO is a buy one, get one sale and it's on our aloe pure skincare pro uh, products, but the top shelf mascara is on there. So if this is one of the ones that you wanted, for example, you could split it with a friend. It's 32. A second would be 650. I'm really bad at math, but whatever you would add that up and divide it by two, it'd be, I think it's like less than 20 bucks. Um, let me just do that quick. I hate not knowing pricing. So 32 plus 650 is 38. Yeah, divided by two, it's 1925. You can get this for each if you wanted to split it with someone. But as long as you don't open it, um, it's good for a while, right? When you open your mascara, you don't want to have it more than six months because bacteria and oil goes into it and then it can cause uh, styes and breakouts and all that or um, eye infections and things but this is a great product I would definitely I know you'll love it once you once you try it but um, this is also a free gift for hosting with me in the month of April I'm doing virtual parties so if you want to have like this fun girls night um, I can make it more customized or I can do a full presentation depending on your group or I can just talk about what's new and what's on sale I am doing fun parties I have my alouette kit set up behind me so we're good to go if that's interested if you're interested in that if that's something you'd be into into message me and I will uh, set you up I have uh, three so far in the next two weeks so they've been fun I did one the other night so anyways thank you so much for joining me and if you have any questions um, message me if you did do your makeup along with me please uh, post a selfie and if you're gonna do it later um, using my tips I would still love to see it. So either message me at your photo or post it in the group and just saying like, this is my makeup look that Misty did the other night. And whether you have the colors or you have anything that you, you know, yours, as long as it's the techniques and stuff. Um, yeah, this is what's nice about having it live is that I'll save it in the group. So when we start make, wearing makeup again, <laughs> you can refer back to this video and rewatch it if you need to as well, right? All right, girls, thank you so much for joining me tonight and I will see you soon. Stay safe and healthy. Have a good Easter weekend. Mwah.